As you guys know, I just recently did an unboxing of Camtasia Studio 8, which I still think is, by the way, the best screencast recording software on the planet. And in this video, we're going to do a comprehensive review where I show you all of the ins and outs of the Camtasia Studio 8 software and why I think the $250 price tag, which you can see in my discounted affiliate link below, is a great deal for this software package. And I think everybody who is considering doing professional screencasts should have it. So you're watching the PCM Tech Help Show. My name is Craig Chamberlain, and let's get started. Now I know that usually I start out these screencasts with showing you how to install the software, only that would have created a dilemma. As you can see, I'm actually using Camtasia Studio in order to show you how to use Camtasia Studio. So it's kind of like one of those catch-22s. So I could not walk you through the installation, but to be honest with you, it's very straightforward. If you watch the review on my Snagit software, it's almost identical. So here we have Camtasia Studio. It puts a nice little start menu shortcut and a desktop shortcut and all that kinds of fun stuff right on my desktop and then I open up the software and you're you're greeted with a very pleasant looking uh, editor essentially and now the, the reason this software is fantastic is because the layout and the tools are very intuitive now in order to illustrate this point we are actually going to create a video together or at least a chunk of it you're watching it actually and we're going to uh, create my intro some uh, transitions and things like that and uh, we'll take a look at what it's capable of doing before I actually decide to go into and uh, tr uh, produce this video. And you'll be able to get a good idea of how it works. So what I'm going to start out with is I have uh, all of my information here. And right now I'm recording the screen. And so that media file is going to be dropped right here in my uh, clip bin so that I can actually use it later. But in the meantime... I can go to a library and see that there's a whole bunch of pre-built callouts and banners and basic titles, and there's a behind the cloud arrows, callouts and basic titles, all kinds of music you can use, which is royalty free and open source, which is always fun. And you can go through here and use all of these awesome themes and uh, objects inside of your video when you decide to edit it. We're gonna take a look at those in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started with actually importing some media. Now I'm going to click import media here and it says all media files. It looks like it supports bitmaps, which are images. So bitmaps, GIFs, JPEGs, JPEG, JPGs, JPEGs, PNG. Audio files are WAV, MP3, and WMA, so you can import audio. In video, you can import uh, cam recorder, AVI, MP4, MPEG, MPG, WMV, .mov, and SWF. I am going to start by importing a video that I have already done and it was in computer. And this video I did for this video, it's the intro of this video. I'm going to pull it up, and I had it in users, Craig Chamberlain, which is me, your gracious host. And I have my videos, and I have XSplit recordings, and I recorded it, this TechSmith Camtasia Studio review intro. So I'm going to go ahead and open that, and it'll import it right here into my clip bin. And then I can drag this clip right down to the timeline so that I can actually use it for my video. It will then ask me what dimensions I want my video to be. I want my video to be full 1280 by 720 HD. So I'm going to go ahead and do YouTube and screencast HD quality. Then I'm going to say, you know what? Forget that. I want to stretch it. I want to make it 1920 by 1080. I can do that. Now we're in full HD. That's what I'm talking about. And I can select OK. Notice that this clip has nothing on it at the moment, but if I go down here and I drag to the left, you'll see my clip. Now notice that my clip is smaller than the frame. Well, that's because my clip was recorded in 720p. That's the only format that my video recorder supported at the time. But I can do this nice little thing right here in Camtasia, and I can stretch it out to the corner. Yay, now I'm officially in 1080p. Now granted, it's pixelated a little bit because I've actually stretched my video out. I can then look at it, and this is really another cool feature of Camtasia, is I can actually scroll slowly through it and you'll see my video go literally frame by frame. And I can use my arrow keys, I am right now, I'm pressing right. And I can go frame by frame through my video 
and look for things throughout it. Very, very cool thing to do here. So let's listen to the intro, beginning part of the intro here, and then cut out some of it. As See that awkward moment there before I started talking? We don't want that. Let's do that again. Pause, right? So then we can split this clip in half in the bottom left-hand corner. All you have to do is select the clip, and then you have this nice little split button right here. And split it. And then I can just go ahead and select the track on the left-hand side and press my delete key. And then move my nice little video to the left. So here we have, as you guys know, I just re me starting right out all normal-like. Now, as you guys have seen on my show, I'm also going to clip off the end here real Let's quick so you guys don't want to see what I say. And I'm going to show you the same thing more than once. I am now going to import my intro. Let's go to my videos and production. And we're going to actually in include my PCM Tech Help Show intro long. And it looks like it cannot support MPEG-2 files or MPG files. I actually converted it using Handbrake on a different folder. So I'm going to go back to Cloud Videos, and I'm going to go to, I had it stored in Unboxing Videos for some reason. Don't ask me why. Maybe that's not where I had it stored. I had it stored in XSplit Captures, and here it is, my intro. And my intro is also 720p. So I'm going to drag this down here as well, and there I have my intro. I can slide it back and forth, and there it is. There's my intro. Obviously, I need to make it larger. So I can actually select the video clip, drag a corner, drag another corner and now I'm in full 1080p on my intro as well but notice something here in the bottom notice how my audio levels in my recording and my audio levels in my intro are vastly different well Camtasia lets you compensate for that so let's listen to it for just a second so we can fix it watching the PCM Tech Help Show my name is Craig Chamberlain and let's get started wow way too quiet so what I need to do is up the audio level on this. Very easy to do in Camtasia. Just double click on the, click on the clip, and up here you have your nice little auto, audio button. Now I can just press the volume up, and it's still quiet, still quiet. I'm just watching that screen down there as it keeps going higher and higher. And I want those levels to get close to the, original, the actual audio levels of my audio clips. So now I've faded up quite a bit, so let's see what it sounds like now. Let's get started that's better but the intro still seems a little quiet so let's fix this by going back to this clip my original video clip and let's reduce the audio volume down and that should probably even it out quite well let's listen to it one more time let's get started yes I love that so now we have actually balanced audio for my recording and for my intro but this intro is kind of has an awkward cut, so can we do transitions in Camtasia? Of course we can. We select the Transitions tab here, and I'm going to use a crossfade. Now you have all kinds of options here for your transitions, of course. I'm a fan of the classics, so I'll click and hold on Fade, and I will drag it in between my clips. That's literally, people, all you have to do. So let's look at my clip one more time and check it out. Let's get started. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And that's what amazes, is amazing about Camtasia, is a whole first part of my video is done. Last, all that I need now is my actual screen recording that you guys are watching right now as I speak. And as soon as I finish talking, it's actually going to import this video directly into my clip bin so that I can drag it to the end of this and then actually do my transition and do all kinds of interesting zoom and pans. In the meantime, let me import a different media clip so you can see how the screencast editing actually works. I can go to Cloud Videos, and I'm going to go to Software Reviews. I'm going to pull up the Snagit 11 review that I did, and I'm going to import that clip. I'm going to drag it down here to the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to actually import that video clip. Because this one has a screencast on it. I want to show you guys what you can do with screencasts. Okay? Notice that in this video, I actually did zooming and panning and things like that. What you can do is you, if you have a screencast, like you're looking at right now, I can actually choose this part of the video that I'm in. On the left-hand side, I can choose zoom and pan. And then on this left-hand side, you can choose which part of the screen you'd like to zoom in on. And check that out. It will zoom in automatically, very fluidly, on that section of the screen. And then you can actually tell it how much you want to zoom in this nice little dragger here. 
And you can also go down and do something called smart focus, which will actually automatically shift the focus at any given time to help improve the uh, actual overall uh, flow of your, your transition. So let's go ahead and zoom this out again, zoom this in a little more and say we're zooming in. And then you can actually double click on the transition at the bottom right hand corner here. And you can also actually extend the length of time that this transition takes place for it to do its zoom. So you can do all kinds of interesting stuff there. But let's not stop there. Let's go to callouts or library like we did before, select one of our objects and we can actually drag it right into the right into the timeline. And now we can actually customize a callout on this actual screencast here. So I can actually go through and create objects right within the uh, the transitionary period of the, the basically of the video clip. And you can have that object either just bounce right in or you can have it fade in. So you can do all kinds of interesting things here. Obviously, that was a terrible call out I chose to use. But if I press play right now, now I'm going to load up you're my see DVD something happen rewrite here. drive so that I can load see, it transitioned in auto run. And it's also doing my zoom now and I pan. will walk you through an instant. That's pretty much in a nutshell how Camtasia works. Lastly, but not least, you can actually go ahead and delete those at any given time. Go through after you've done all your panning and zooming and editing and cutting. You can actually go in and do cursor effects, which is one of my favorites. Uh, and you can actually do this in the editor of the recorder, which will actually make little dots and things appear when you're recording your screen. Always a fun thing to do. So let me go back to the clip bin here. And finally, as if it wasn't enough that you could do this awesome editing and recording of your entire video, you have an entire production suite as well right here in the production share section. So I can select that and then I can actually automatically share to YouTube from here. Or if you want to just record a custom production setting, which is what I like to do, you can actually come in here and choose what kind of video you want to do and uh, how you want to actually set up your production preset. So I'll say MP4 only, click new, and I can actually tell it what the preset name is. High, we'll just do high definition, 1080p. I know I chose 720, but we're going to be able to change that. Then we're going to choose next. We don't want with a controller because we're not going to create a website with it or a flash player. Click next. And then I can actually choose for my video options all kinds of information as well. So then I can click uh, finish, which actually doesn't look like it's letting me do my full 1080p, which I don't like. Oh, my fault. I got to go back here and do video settings. <laughs> Encoding mode, I got to do bit rate. This is all good. This is all good. Size, that's where my mistake is actually coming in. You want to on check use editing dimensions and you want to do 1920 for your width uh, and 1080 for your height. So that'll actually give you your, uh, your video recording dimensions that you would like to use and it'll actually set them to that static for that preset. Then you can click next and finish and you'll actually have this preset available to you every time you go to do a production right there in high definition 1080p. See, as you can see, the dimensions will be 1920 by 1080 and it'll be an MP4. So very cool. Then you can click next. It'll produce the video and it, it optimizes the video as well for very, very, very low uh, file size, but very high resolution effects. So this is in a nutshell, uh, one of the hand, hands down, one of the best screencasting software packages I have personally used. I'm really only touching the surface of everything that it's capable of. Obviously, you can still do transition, visual properties, voice narration, so you can actually record yourself while a video is playing. You can use your record camera. You can use captions and quizzing. And remember, with the actual recorder as well, I can capture my webcam, so I can actually show my face as well right on the video as an overlay, and I can actually drag it throughout the actual video feed wherever I want and resize it any way I want. Unfortunately, I can't show that demonstration to you because I'm using the software as a recorder right now, so that kind of limits me on that. So between all of the tools available to you, it makes the $250 price tag look almost cheap for what you get. This is essentially a all-encompassing screencast production package. It's not just screencast software. It is a screencast and editor and production suite and it also lets you do full optimization straight and upload straight to YouTube. I can hammer out, like I just did in this video, an entire screencast in a matter of minutes instead of hours because I don't require any separate piece of software to get my job completed. So that's all there is to this video. As always, I know we went a little long, but this is great software. I wanted to cover all my bases. Remember to 
to stay tuned to the PCM Tech Help Show. Also, subscribe and like this video if you liked it. Also, remember, my name is Craig Chamberlain, and you're watching the PCM Tech Help Show.